join us for part two of the Bagley Bash at the Talaclin Railway, celebrating 40 years of the railway's Bagleys, with honorary diesel Tom Rolt out operating the service. Back at Wharf, one of the stars of the Bagley Bash number 11 had just pulled into the station and we would be getting on this train for a trip up the line. But the Bagley wasn't going to be the motive power. Oh no, we were going to be travelling on something much, much slower. And this coach had been put aside for me and anybody who wanted to travel alongside me. And I'm sure you've guessed it, we were going up on the slowest locomotive on the railway. We were going up on ALF. quickest, most powerful locomotive in the entire fleet. None other than number nine, Alf, which I reviewed ages ago and I can tell you is very slow. In fact, when I took it out, it took us an entire evening to get not quite to bring glass. We're going to take it all the way up to Abergan Lowland. And that is going to take us possibly a week. I'm not sure, but it's very, very slow. Off we go. It is slow. I mean, we're slowing down, but this is ridiculous. And having exchanged the token, we were free to head up the line.
we have made it up the line to Dolgok. And frankly, the time it's taken us to get here, any other service would now be at the other end of the line and coming back. It has been a wonderful way to sample the scenery of Wales on an amazingly sunny and dry day. It is glorious. And I've got a train full of people who are supporters and fans of the channel. So we're chatting to all this bunch and it's pretty good actually. So with that, the guards giving me funny looks, so uh, ta To enjoy the views from the cab in real time would take hours. So I have sped up the journey quite significantly from just outside Dolgok all the way up to Abergenolan. And once we'd arrived, Alf came off the train and ran round. Having finally arrived at Abergenolan Station, which took an exceedingly long time, we're now going to wait for the next exciting thing, which is a non-stop double header with the birthday bash diesels themselves. Yes, we're waiting for double Bagley action. The problem is that it's taken us a long time to get here, but we still have 20 minutes to wait. So with that, we're going to go and explore the station and see if there's some nicer shots that we can get. But before the Bagleys can make their way up, we had to wait for the down service to go and clear the line. And with that out the way, it was a waiting game, waiting for the double header to arrive. we have a bit of time here to sit back, enjoy the views, maybe have a cup of tea or something to eat before it goes back down, all the way back down to <laughs> Wharf. So the interesting thing was we were meant to be on that. I suppose we're catching the Bagleys on the way back then, assuming the doubleheader non-stop express stops on the way back. My camera bag's on there. <laughs> Whoops. Oh well. 
So the thing to do really was to have a drink, something to eat, and chat to you lovely lot and await the arrival of the Bagleys and hope they were going to stop. And rather pleasantly, they did, which meant that we could hop on and return down the line. Hello, sir. arrival into Wharf marked the last public service of the day, with number 7 already heading off to go to Shed. But just because the day was over for the public, didn't mean that it was over for me. Because I got asked if I wanted to help tidy everything up, and if I wanted to have another bash driving one of my old favourites. Did I want to drive Alf? The plan was fairly simple. We had to shunt and reorganise the works train and then couple up to Midlander and drag that and a couple of wagons back up to Pendre.
Having now successfully swapped the order of the wagons and attached them to the back of number five, I could now go and get rid of the brake van. And with that, I went and put Alf on the front of the train, ready for its journey up to Pendre. But I wasn't going to be going on Alf. No, there was one locomotive that I particularly wanted to have a ride in the cab of. Having arrived in Pendre, I thought my job was over. But no, I was told to get up into the cab of number 11 and to complete the shunt. Good morning, you are. Still going on. About two feet. <sighs> we were positioning number four ready for it to be taken away for overhaul. So my cameraman has the last footplate ride of number four in its current ticket. And with Four's penultimate journey over, all that remained was it to be pulled out and put onto a lorry, I had to put number five around the back of the shed, and then I could park up the Bagley. But just because I was parking the Bagley up in front of number four, ready to draw it out tomorrow, didn't mean that I was finished.
because Alf was still running and had unfinished business. Home with me, does that mean it's mine? There was but one more thing to do, and that was to have a drive of number 12, because then I'd had a cab ride on all of the internal combustion that had been running during the Bagley Bash. Feeling very pleased with myself, all I had to do was return down to Wharf, ready for an hour with Laurie, where I was given a talk and then taking some questions from some of the lovely people who had come along for the day. And if you're interested to what that was, that will be coming out next week on the channel in full. So that's something for all of you to enjoy. And with that, that's the end of this video. If you have enjoyed this one, how about clicking somewhere on the screen now for a couple of the other videos we shot at the Talakin Railway, including part one. And of course, check out the Talakin Railway's website. They're always looking for more volunteers. And of course, like, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and let me know what you've enjoyed most. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.